Good morning. It's Thursday. It's October 15. It's time for Thirsty Thursday. You know, Jesus said, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. So I pray we hunger and thirst for the things of God and that he fills us. There is an incredible promise that we find in Corinthians written by Paul in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I just want to read several verses here. Paul starts in verse 1. He says, And I, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But we speak wisdom among those who are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the rulers of this world that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, which God has hidden, predetermining it before the world for our glory, which none of the rulers of this world knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, this is an incredible promise of an incredible future, and it refers back to another very powerful promise that God gave to his people through the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 64 and verse 4, we read, From forever they have not heard, nor did they listen. I has not seen a God except you who works for him, who waits for him. Now, the Old Testament promise applied primarily to the nation of Israel. But its New Testament reference includes uh, a promise available to all who love the Lord, the one who was and is the Savior of the world. Now, if we take a moment and compare the two prophetic promises from Isaiah and Paul, I think there are three important truths that we see coming out here. First of all, these things that God has promised for his loved ones have been planned by God and are at least somewhat visible since the beginning of the world. They're visible to the extent that they have been revealed in part by the prophets of God who spoke for God, who spoke uh, the word of God since the world began. Luke chapter 1 reminds us of that. So, so we know that God has planned these things. Secondly, we know that these people who wait for him in the Old Testament are connected with the people in the New Testament who love him. They're drawn together in a group. The Apostle Paul joins both these groups together when he says, Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So there's a larger group. Second Timothy 4 and verse 8 gives us a little bit more of that. So everyone waiting and loving and looking will participate in the Lord's appearing. And then finally, Scripture says we cannot even begin to grasp and understand the great and glorious things that God has prepared for those who love him and wait for him and look for him. Now, in a somewhat limited way, the Spirit of God revealed some of God's plans partially through John, the revelator, uh, and allowed him to, to see and hear things. Revelation 21 in verse 2 says, The holy city said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven and heard a great voice out of heaven saying, God himself shall be with them and be their God. So, <coughs> pardon me. So John saw and heard things uh, future in, into the future uh, that God was doing and, and planning. Uh, and we look forward to that day. Then our eyes will fully see and our ears will completely hear and our hearts will totally understand the fullness of God's love in Christ for us and, and all that he did. I believe we see in a very limited capacity today what all of this means to us, but I believe there will be a time 
when our eyes will be opened, our ears will be opened, our hearts will be able to understand. And I believe part of eternity will be an increased understanding and an increased ability to see and an increased ability to hear and understand and know all these things God is doing. That's, I believe that's part of eternity. Uh, thank the Lord for his love for us. Amen. That's God's word for today. I pray it's a blessing to you. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you thankful for this day and also thankful for the future day, looking forward to the time when we also will see the new city, the holy uh, city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Lord, we're so thankful we get to be a part of what you're doing. We're so thankful that uh, as we love you and as we wait for you and as we look for you, Lord, we will see you one day very soon. Lord, I pray that truth is impacted to our hearts and lives in a way that we uh, have a renewed sense of the nearness of the coming of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for saving us and setting us free. We're grateful for the promise that says we uh, don't really grasp right now. We can't see. We can't hear. We can't understand in our heart the things that you prepared for us. But, Lord, we trust that even as Jesus said, I go to prepare a place that's what you're doing now, and you're making ready for us, and we look forward to that time. Lord, help us to understand that. Lord, I pray your people would be strong. I pray they'd be well. I pray they'd have every need met. We thank you, Lord. We can lean on you and look to you, and you take care of us. We love you, and we trust you, and we pray this in the name of your Son. Amen. Well, that's uh, our time for today. On Thursday, we'll be together for a moment tomorrow, and then we'll gather together in God's house on Sunday. We look forward to that. Always a good time. Uh, an hour of worship together. We pray together. We worship. We hear the word. It's encouraging to me, and I hope it is to you as well. So I pray you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you again soon. God bless you.